Improving Cooling System Efficiency, Part 12, Improving Cooling System Efficiency Summary. So let's review uh, the overall uh, goals for improving cooling system efficiency. Uh, first, we've mentioned that in order for a system to operate efficiently with regard to water consumption, the first thing we need to focus on is maximizing the cycles of concentration. I like to suggest that 10 cycles of concentration is a practical target for, for many cooling water systems. Now, one way to estimate your cycles of concentration limit is through the cycle of concentration uh, estimator tool that will calculate that for you based on your water makeup water quality. But if it should come to pass that uh, the result is less than 10 cycles, then you can ask, uh, are there alternative methods for treating the makeup to pretreat the makeup uh, to allow us to get to higher cycles of concentration? And that is a, a point that, that needs to be considered and discussed with your uh, water treatment vendor or consultant to make sure that you are, in fact, operating at maximum cycles. If you do that, uh, if you are able to, uh, to achieve that 10 cycle, you can expect a 15 to 25 percent water savings over the traditional cycles of uh, concentration, which tend to be around three to four. So um, significant improvements and gains that can be made on water consumption uh, by focusing on cycles of concentration. We also want to operate with good energy efficiency. And we said there are several uh, strategies for improving energy efficiency. One is to make best use of a water economizer or a free cooling heat exchanger. This takes our chiller out of service and uh, saves the energy that would normally be used to drive the chiller compressor. If uh, your building is so equipped with air side economizers, the uh, use of them uh, when the outside air temperatures are, are appropriate, uh, again, takes the load off uh, the uh, chiller, but also has the added uh, benefit of taking some of the load off the cooling tower so it not only saves energy, but it also saves water. Uh, operating the cooling tower to produce uh, condenser water temperatures as low as possible uh, also saves energy. A one degree drop in uh, condenser water temperature represents an approximate 1% improvement in chiller efficiency. Uh, so we need to uh, make sure that we're, we're operating the tower to maintain as low a condenser water temperature as is permissible by the chiller manufacturer. You, there are certain limits to that, but uh, uh, that is a worthwhile uh, exercise. And also optimizing the chilled water temperature range uh, helps uh, conserve energy by, uh, by uh, taking some of the uh, load off the chiller. And uh, in all of this, by uh, reducing our water consumption, uh, we also save the energy that's embedded in producing the makeup water that's being used in the uh, cooling tower. One of the uh, requirements for most cooling towers is uh, chemical consumption, chemical treatment for scale corrosion and microbiological fouling. Uh, operating the cooling tower at maximum cycles reduces the chemical consumption required to control the scale corrosion and microbiological fouling by up to 75% depending on the treatment technology used. So uh, this has a very favorable effect on uh, the amounts of chemical that are required um, to uh, properly treat uh, the cooling tower. And in all of this, of course, as we said at the outset, uh, water and energy are valuable resources, so we can reduce the environmental impact uh, by implementing these strategies to conserve fresh water to reduce the amounts of chemicals that are discharged into the environment by minimizing waste disposal and also by promoting a healthy work environment so that those who work in and around the cooling water system are, are not exposed to 
um, chemicals and, and other uh, components that go into the operation of the cooling tower. So in summary then, uh, improving cooling system efficiency by uh, following the strategies that we've outlined in this webinar, uh, this will help you to conserve water and energy and, and while at the same time having a favorable impact on the environment. Overall, this is good for business, good for the environment, and good for you. Thank you very much for listening to the webinar and uh, we wish you good success with your improvements in your cooling water system.